right before you turn around and say, oh, there's something wrong with my screen, or there's an editing issue here. No, it's not. It's in black and white for a reason. The film's obviously in black and white, so I decided to do this review in black and white, so it just makes sense. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So Mank is a Netflix production that's been in development for many years now. David Fincher's father, Jack, wrote the script many years ago, but he has sadly died since then. So in a way, the film is a posthumous tribute and has been released in his honour. So Mank tells the true story of alcoholic screenwriter Herman J. Mankiewicz in 1930s Hollywood, who is under contract by RKO Film Studio to write a screenplay for Orson Welles' first feature film, that film being the iconic classic Citizen Kane. And this film basically tells the story of how it was written. So automatically, when you think about Citizen Kane, it's arguably considered one of the greatest films, if not the greatest film that's ever been made. And when you think about this film's direct association with Citizen Kane, everyone kind of thinks, how is it going to be like Citizen Kane? How familiar is it going to be to the film? How different is it going to be to the film? Because in a way, it's actually less about Citizen Kane than people think, because it's not really about Citizen Kane as the story or in some way how it was written. Yes, it follows along with the ways in which it was written and the relationships between the characters, but more than anything, it follows the people who were writing the story and who made the film. And the build-up to it is the actual production of Citizen Kane, such as Herman Mankiewicz and Orson Welles, among others. I mean, think of the title. When you look at it and think Mank, no one in their right mind would automatically think, boom. Citizen Kane screenwriter. That's a film about him, right? Not everybody, and if not, in fact, no one will think that. But after when you watch the trailer or you read the synopsis, you think, ooh, interesting. This screenwriter has a very unique and quite a dark story to tell in how he managed to create what is probably and arguably the greatest film of all time. But it isn't in my opinion. I mean, I've seen Citizen Kane many times. I've watched it a few times when I was at uni and I watched it before and have since then. I think it's fantastic. I think it's very, very good. But I wouldn't say it's the absolute ultimate classic film of all time. I could probably list a few that I think are better, but it's still very good. But anyway, enough about Citizen Kane. Let's talk about Mank. So when you think about other biopics that have been released over the years, like JFK, Malcolm X, Bohemian Rhapsody, the titles of those films directly address the person involved because the wording is so familiar with its audience whereas in this case you don't so Mank definitely looked like it had an interesting story to tell through its context and through its characters but in many ways though it was just something that I just could not connect with entirely and a lot of that was due to the pacing I wouldn't go as far as to say that it was boring or dull it just didn't have a central theme or a central purpose behind what was driving the narrative forward and I think a lot of that was due to the structure of the story where they were jumping backwards and forwards in time, really, between flashbacks, present, flashback, presence, flashback, present, at such jumpy occasions. Yes, the flashbacks provide information, and obviously that's what they do, but I just felt that the flashbacks didn't really add anything to them. Well, not much anyway, that they probably could have been. Yes, we knew that he was a bit washed up, and he was an alcoholic, and he had his struggles and everything, but... I just think there wasn't really much of a premise in terms of how they made Citizen Kane and that's what the whole point of watching the film is. People are wanting to watch the film to know that and it just did not grasp what it was trying to show. And obviously because Citizen Kane has a very unique narrative structure that kind of pioneered really the idea of narrative and how it's done in that kind of way. So they tried to show a story about the writer of Citizen Kane in a similar way to Citizen Kane, and I'm just not sure that it entirely worked. It just felt a bit off and a bit flat, and it's not many films that do this, really. It's that I don't think it even knew who its target audience were. It kind of didn't really have any connection with the audience, in my opinion, because, yes, it was about the idea of telling a story about an alcoholic screenwriter and making one of the greatest films of all time, but I think it would only appeal to a certain group, maybe people who know Citizen Kane, people who watch 1940s classic films and if you do potentially have a very narrow audience in that regard you would probably find a number of different ways to make it engaging make it interesting and make it dramatic as well and i just don't think they grasped it as well as they probably could have done because at times i just felt it was very self-indulgent and it was just doing something for the sake of doing it rather than providing us with something to learn from or feel emotionally connected to or anything like that and plus i don't think the final scene worked for me either because the whole point was about citizen kane and building up to it through these particular relationships between the characters but and in many ways it felt short there was just no message no meaning because at the end of the film a lot of people would probably think after watching Mank now I might go and watch Citizen Kane and I just feel that that was maybe what they could have capitalized on to revisit 
the old classic film again. And I just don't think it did because of how jumpy things were at times. And I don't think it was done to the highest standards, not even by David Fincher's for that matter, who I think is a fantastic director. But anyway, enough talking about the pacing and about the narrative structure. There were techniques in it that I did really, really enjoy. I did like though when they were jumping to the flashbacks when you saw the pieces of text on the screen. It was telling a date and a place as part of those flashbacks in a screenwriting kind of formula. You know, you had the sound of the typewriter and the font. And that idea kind of worked because the film was about a screenwriter and his story to finishing one of his films that probably ended up being the greatest film he ever wrote. And I think because the film was shot in black and white, really captured that time setting of it being in the 1940s when most films were being released in that format. And of course, Citizen Kane was as well. It really captured that classic feeling. And I think sometimes when films are shot in black and white for a 21st century audience, I tend to appreciate them a little bit more. I mean, The Artist was a prime example of that, which of course went on to win Best Picture, and that was a silent film set in the 20s. And when you think about black and white cinema, you just have two colours, and you're kind of limited to how great you can show your cinematography. Citizen Kane already had probably the greatest cinematography for a black and white film ever, and Mank is no exception, because the cinematography in that was absolutely stunning. And the film is entirely a homage to Citizen Kane, but I just don't think it grasped that individuality of what it could have been in terms of creating that backstory. So now onto the performances. I love Gary Oldman. He's probably one of my favourite actors at the moment because almost every film that I've seen him in has been absolutely fantastic and he's always delivered top-notch performances and I wouldn't expect anything less from him in any film he ever does. And I just felt his performance in Man could have been one of his best because he's one of those characters who's very complex, he's very, you know, unpredictable, he's quite unorthodox and I just felt with Gary Oldman's track record of playing some characters like that before, before. It would have really worked, but I'm just not sure it did. I enjoyed a few moments, you know, but a lot of the time he just mumbled and you couldn't really understand what he was saying or what he was doing. And maybe that was part of the drunk side of the character, I'm not sure, and it probably was, but I just didn't feel like I was connected to that character or following along with his story, not even his body language, and I just felt disappointed. It was a missed opportunity to show the film industry's corrupt system at the time through that character. Meanwhile, other supporting roles, such as from Amanda Seyfried and Lily Collins, I mean, they delivered decent performance but the problem was they weren't developed enough again they didn't entirely have enough chemistry or enough screen time to even make us feel engaged or even care about those characters which was again disappointing Cypher is actually tipped for an Oscar nomination and I'm not really sure why to be honest only time will tell whether she'll actually win it so for me Mank is one of those films that looks pretty and looks interesting but turns out quite flat it's almost like cooking a really, really good recipe that looks good on paper, but when you taste it, it just has no flavour. That is mank. And while it had its creative and enjoyable moments, it just fell short and for a director of David Fincher's stature, I expected better from him. I've seen every single film that he's done and this is probably the worst one I've seen. Mank falls into the trap where just because it's got a backstory and it's a true one, doesn't make it automatically great. Yes, it has a story to tell, and yes, it's about a real person or people, but that doesn't mean it's automatically creative, ingenious and emotional. It's how it's done and how it's uh, portrayed. Just in a few words, I would just say that it's a missed opportunity. So what do you think of Mank? Have I been too harsh on it? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you did go on to enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and have a notification bell tick for every single time I upload a video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.